called me Lonzo, a.k.a. the world-class Grand Master. I am the godfather of the West Coast hip-hop. Like you said before, ain't no Dr. Drake, ain't no Easy e ain't no Ice Cube, ain't no Snoop Dogg, ain't none of them, unless you get me first, okay? Let's get this started. Before, before Shug, there was Lonzo. Before Easy, there was Lonzo, okay? Before CDs, there was Lonzo. Lonzo goes back. Let me see, hold on, hold on. Get some volume on that right quick. Yeah. Lonzo goes back to 19, ah, I'm going to say, uh, Lonzo goes back to 1975, fresh out of high school. Fifth Guardian of High School. Anybody from Guardian of Compton? Y'all know where that is, though, right? Yeah. It's that way. Don't get caught up in the dark. All right? <laughs> Um, I've been DJing since 1976. I still DJ right to this day. I'm older than most of your parents. I've been in hip hop when hip hop wasn't even hip hop. It was just music. It meant something to us back then. It had a, it had, a it had substance. It's not like it is right now. Um, it's funny. It's funny. It's real funny. I own a nightclub. The club I own used to be called Even After Dark. Like you said earlier. That's why I met Dr. Dre, and he left the dog back in 1982. He was 17 years old. I met Easy on the steps out in front of Eve at the Dark back in 1982. But I came back to this club six years ago after owning other clubs, after touring the world. Hip DJing is my love. That's what I love doing. You need DJs in the house? Ah, damn, I'm DJ in the house. Okay, well, I'm only DJ. If you've ever been a DJ, if you've ever played records for anybody and watched them respond to you, watch the, how the music moves people, you understand where I'm coming from. That's my first love, first and foremost. After a while, I was able to start making records. I formed a group called World Class Record Group. Okay, we have any, we get, we get why you want to stay here with me? I turned it up. Okay. One of my, uh, his, one of my hit songs is like a million dollars. I dance. But nothing else me.
I still get We could all, everybody here over 18? Yes. Yeah, everybody's over 18. Yes. I still can kill a bitch. I said, how you going to do that? She reached the tongue and says, pull out a razor blade out of her mouth. I still can kill a bitch. Okay? This is a New York thing. She was in L.A., but she had a, they keep razor blades inside their jaw and will talk to you just like I'm talking to you right now. And when it get, if, if it goes down, they pull it out their side of their mouth and they're slicing. You never know, you, you never know what happened to you. That became the culture. And I'm trying to understand, what happened? What happened? It was fun one day. I go on tour. All we did was make money and have girls. That was our thing. We were the pretty boys back in the day, OK? We'd go, to, go on tour. We'd make money, get a few girls, OK? Beautiful. All of a sudden, we go on tour. I'm going on tour with N.W.A., who would have a record crew. I go to the, to the, uh, to the, to the mall. Buy me, some, buy me some draws, they in the sporting good department buying guns, buying shotguns. I said, man, what tour y'all going on? Say what you going to say, I'm going on tour back, back east. Y'all going to uh, Iraq or something. Okay? After the parties, all we did was have an after party. Now, there's fights every day. Somebody get killed at every concert. Killing folks was no big deal. And I, it's like, for me, I quit. Stop being fun, okay? And when I quit, I didn't, I didn't understand what happened. Well, what happened, it was a series of things that happened. Back in the early 80s, there was a group called Two Live Group. Anybody heard of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Two Live Group, Luke Skywalker, that was his name. Luther Campbell was his name. Luke had a group called Two Live Crew. They was pop that, beep, pop that, y'all know the song, <laughs> okay? I ain't gotta tell you the song. Luke. Went up against the Supreme Court. He fought the Supreme Court and what and Disneyland and Disney, the Disney Corporation sued Luke for using uh, some of their copyrighted material. Okay? And also they had a big thing about his all his lyrics. They had a uh, they went to the Supreme Court for indecent exposure, indecent lyrics, whatever the case may be. And he won. He beat Disney. He beat the Supreme Court, he won the case, and what happened, they took the cap off of lyrical content. He won the free speech case, okay? So now, you can cuss. You can cuss, you can say whatever you want to on record, okay? When that happened, everybody in his mama went crazy cussing. <laughs> Women became hoes, bitches. Nobody can say nothing about nothing. They put you in a certain section, but that section was the most popular section in the store. So everybody now who's trying to get recognized in the record business is trying to out, out low life each other. You follow what I'm saying? How low can you go? What can you get for attention? So what happened is most of the artists traded respect for attention. Back in the day, guys like Rakim, Eric B and Rakim, well-renowned rappers, Cool Mo D, these guys who grew up with me, you gotta, go, you gotta go to the history book to hear about them. They had a record of 25 years. These were some of the most prolific, most talented writers of that time. When you spoke of Rakim, you spoke of, it was, it was hip hop royalty. Rakim, oh my God. Cool Mo D, oh my God. Nowadays, who you got? Lil Wayne? <laughs> huh? You got, who you got? Lil Wayne? So, the whole culture converted. It wasn't about respect no more. Who could get the most attention? Who could say the most far out stuff and get paid for it? Who could you talk about the most and get paid? In fact, uh, Al Alan Iverson, basketball player, Alan Iverson, remember Alan Iverson? Made, a, made an album. <laughs> Talked about his mama being a crack hole. It was so bad, it was, he said so much negative stuff about his mama, the NBA refused to let him put the album out. He said, you can't do it to your mama, man. I'm sorry, you can't. That's your mama, man. He trying to get paid like everybody else. So what ha what's happened over the, few, over the last few years, you got all these artists competing for attention, not respect, which changed the game. He, he mentioned an artist earlier, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, one of the most respected guys in the game. His records over, over 40 years old are still relevant today. <coughs> Do we have any songwriters in the building? <coughs> Anybody want to be in the game? Yeah. If you want to be in the game, 
write something that's going to be prolific. It's going to, it's going to say something to somebody. <coughs> Don't just write something just to have some fun. If you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, it's, it's going to pass you by. Every song I played you just there, just now, a minute ago, I still get paid for the songs right to this day. Those songs are 25 years old. I still get paid for them. I still get paid for them. Wait on the check tomorrow. They put them in movies. They put them in, they put them in movies. I'm trying to get a commercial deal right now because the songs have value. They represent a the time. Right now, making music is so easy, they go on your laptop. Y'all, they don't respect it. When I made an album, a single cost me $2,500. I got a question for you. Do we have any math majors in here? Anybody in, in the math? I'm going to give you a question. Give you, anybody got a calculator? On the phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Plus numbers, right? That's no problem. Tell me how many grooves are in a record, a 12-inch or an album. Does anybody know how many grooves? Have any of you even seen a record or an album? Look, right there. Like a little black. Yeah. Like oh, black. We know what it is, right? <laughs> All right. Put them on the, got a I know everything's electronic, man. 1,200. You need to DJs. Anybody got any idea how many grooves in the record? The most simple question in the world. Only one. Only one. You make a record. You put it on the, on the, on the, first, on the first groove, and it just goes around. It never stops. OK? These are things that are simple, but they're also basic information that most, kids, most people don't even know. When, you made, when I made a record back in the day, my first record cost me twenty-five hundred dollars. Okay, when I made my album, it cost me five grand. Today, you can take that laptop, go down to the Guitar Center, buy Pro Tools, Fruity Loops, and a couple other programs. Go in your bedroom, come out tomorrow morning with something that's going to be, you're going to call music. Okay, this is why you got the trash you got right now. Okay, everybody ain't trash, but most of you guys are garbage collectors. Okay, <laughs> everybody ain't trash, but a lot of them got a lot of them got boots on. Okay. It ain't working. A lot of the stuff is going to be so disposable, it's ridiculous. Okay? And the subject matter is so... <sighs> Understand this. Most of y'all are 19, 20, 21 years old, 22 years old. Okay? Most of you guys, what, 22 years old? You been to strip club yet? Tell the truth. Don't lie. 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 You drink? Ah, uh, you know, all you drink. <laughs> Most of the people writing the song, especially when you get under 21, have not experienced anything. They don't know nothing. All they know is they, they are, you guys are just now starting to get into nightclub on a regular basis. Some of y'all have been sneaking in for a while, but I know. But some of y'all just not getting a nightclub on a regular basis. Some of you guys just going to strip club. You just starting to see girls in bikinis and naked for the first time. This stuff is blowing their minds, okay? When they made records back in the day, most of the songs back in the day were recorded by grown men. So they had, they had children. They experienced love. They, they had something to talk about. Nowadays, most of you guys love in that. You follow what I'm saying? How do you talk about something uh, valid and you haven't lived alone enough time? If you go to Vietnam and come back, if you go to Iraq and come back, oh yeah, you have to talk about it. But because the system has changed so much, you'll never get record, never get hurt. Because back in the day, there was 3,500 radio stations around the country, owned by 3,400 different owners. Now, there's 3,400 radio stations, but they're only controlled by about eight corporations. So what you're going to hear is what they want you to hear. What you, what you think is the bomb, ain't really the bomb. The bomb is, the bomb is somewhere buried on the internet someplace, you probably got to, if you don't know the artist personally or got his email address on the Facebook page, you'll never know he exists. There's thousands of, thousands of radio stations on the internet right now, but you can't find them all, you can't. When I was, I'm, I'm a promoter. When I had my uh, third club at the Hollywood Park Casino, I would go to KGLH, y'all heard of KGLH? And then I don't Pandora, okay? I go to KTLH, I drop off a check, put the check clear the bank on Monday, I would have got the money. I would have made that money back plus my profit already. Because it was it was condensed where it was the only only source of entertainment. Source of promotion was KGLH for my group. Okay? Now I gotta go to KGLH, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
uh, uh, Pinterest, what, what, what's the other one? You got, you got to be all these different media sites. Plus, if you're not in the car listening, you won't hear my commercial. It costs me $150 spot. Okay? If you're not on Facebook at the time when, when the pop is on top of your screen, you're going to miss it. So, the, the delusion of the media, but then the control of the media. So, one is the, on, on one end is deluded, on the other end is concentrated. So, if you pull this, what's this you're to the radio? Anybody listen to the radio anymore? Come on! Nobody listen to the radio? Yeah, yeah. 94.5. 94.5. 93. 93.5. K-Day. K-Day. Woo! God, who's scared of that? <laughs> <laughs> Most of y'all listen to Pandora, right? Yeah. Or what, what's the other one on the internet that everybody listens to? Spotify. Spotify. So if the record not getting played on Spotify or Pandora, you're not going to hear it. Okay? How do you get to Spotify or Pandora? You have to go through another corporation that's going to screen the product. And if you don't come correct with a check or a gift or something like that, your record won't get played. Okay? I tell artists all the time, the best way to get your record played is if you're an artist, I'm giving you some game right quick, it finds you a dance cut. People can dance too. And I'm not talking about some drink, smoke, drink. That's not a dance cut. I'm sorry. That's what shit you, I'm sorry. That's what you, that's what you, that's what you go to, get in your homeboy's car. And you smoke something and you relax and you sit there and just bottom your head. That won't get you, that won't put you in the club working. Okay? That won't get you working very fast. You got some people can something they can move their feet to, then you can get paid. I did a party Saturday, last Saturday night for a group about your age. I played my ratchet files for my Sobato system. Okay? <laughs> we played all night, I played all the cuts, all the cuts. I got tired because nobody came. Y'all don't have a dance, do you? What's the, what's the latest dance? The slap on the button? Huh? What's the latest dance? Huh? The slap on the button? Because that's all they do. The, the, that next Sunday, the next day, Sunday, it was a uh, 60th, 6 old celebration for the class of 19, oh, no, sorry. It was a, a 40th celebration and the 60th birthday of the school, my, my alma mater, Centennial High School, we got grandmas in the club getting a groove on, okay? Grandmas, I got it on my Facebook page. I made a comment, there's gonna be some lead and some Ben Gay slang in the mall morning to walk in the store, but guess what? Grandma getting her groove on because that's the mentality we had back in the day. I, I almost feel sorry for y'all to a certain degree. Y'all got all the technology in the world. There ain't no substance behind it. Y'all ain't here. Y'all ain't never experienced Soul Train. Y'all ain't never experienced. You ever heard of Soul Train? Yeah. You know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have a Soul Train. Y'all don't have a dead, uh, 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 come on Saturday afternoon. I forgot the, the, the white guy had one. I forgot the name of the show. Uh, can you help me out? It's bandstand? Bandstand, American Bandstand, okay? Y'all whole culture, it's been manipulated by Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne, Snoop, huh? What? Nothing right. Justin Bieber, who else? Okay. And they all showed you how to be, and they all showed you how to be disrespectful. How to get shot? They won't get shot, but you will get shot. Okay. You can't do what Lil Wayne do but not get shot. Okay. Huh? Help you understand. Probably. The things that I have to say this from a, a grown man perspective, the things that happened in Ferguson, if that brother, if for him to for, for him to have died back in the day, he would have had to have done something. Probably. He would have had to have done something. It may have been stupid, but he would have to have done something. And I'll tell you something else. If something that had happened to him back in the day, I'm gonna get in trouble now. Somebody else would have done something. It's a different mindset. Different mindset. You follow what I'm saying? I'm trying to I'm give you some old man game here, okay? I'm going to just ball game for you, all right? Bottom line is, when you have, you guys got so much technology, but you are victims of what they call weapons of mass distraction. You know what that is? 
You ever heard of the term before? Weapons of mass distraction? How many of y'all get you play video games? How many of y'all get you play video games? I mean, how many of y'all do you play? I play quite a few videos. You better watch yourself, okay? All these things, video games, I love to death, okay? But you, video games, reality TV, so-called reality TV, you got to take it in stride, folks. Because it, it, it's, it's called a, a time vampire. Okay, it's like your time to look at people be 40 years old doing the same thing. That's just an old man game. Okay, get back to the hip hop. All right, anybody got any questions? Come on! I know you got a question. I know somebody has a question. I know you got a question. You've been looking at me all day long. You got a question. What you want to ask? I have a stump, I look like huh? I really don't have a question. You nervous? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would you say your favorite artist is now? Well, from the recent artists. My out. favorite artist right now is, is Wale. Wale? Wale. 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 Okay? That's my boy. Okay? Because he is funky. He got something to say. And he said it very well. Okay? But you don't get him on the radio. I think he's coming out. He's coming out. He's coming out. Okay? I, you know, but you want to know where I found Wale at? Now, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Wale at Wale. 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 You know where I found Wale at? I was doing a line dance party for some senior citizens. <laughs> and they was playing Wale, and I heard one of his cousins. Who was that? What song was it? Huh? What song was it? Um, it's, on the, it's on the same album, album as Gullible. It's Gifted. It's a Gifted album. It's Gifted. It's a Gifted. It's song called Gifted. Okay? And they play Gifted. These old ladies, I'm telling you, y'all ain't understanding, understand okay? These old ladies in their 60s and 70s, these sisters be line dancing all night, all day long. Okay, they will out dance all y'all. They don't never stop. They do the bath of bottle water and they, they do this thing all day long. Okay, they hire me to DJ the party. And I'm saying, okay, you know, it's an easy gig. It's like, it's like playing background music for a wedding. Okay, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching them. And I and see, unlike most cats, because I own a nightclub, I see all parts, I see all facets of dancing and, and partying, okay? And I watch the youngsters, they get a drink, the girls huddle up, huddle up together, they dance together. The fellas, he'll buy a drink, he'll dance with his homies, give them the drink. They don't never dance together. I ain't never seen a brother, baby, well, can I get this dance? I won't never see that no more. What? Girls will be dancing, and the guy come up behind me. <laughs> no, I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying, okay? Girls dancing together.
You ain't gonna never see two people fighting while the temptation storm is playing. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna have people fighting when somebody's playing for the love of you by the eyes of your brothers. It just don't do that to your, your psyche. But I tell you what, as a DJ at the club owner, I have to stop playing hip hop at about 1.15, sometimes 1 o'clock, depending on the crowd. Because it gets you so hyped up, it makes, it makes you want to just, uh, 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 you know, and you know, whoa, 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 whoa. next thing you know, you got to fight. Just like that, yeah, baby. That's true, because I personally went to Santa Monica High School and we could play anything. So when I went to their prom, like, they played, like, anything. And when I went to Westchester's prom, they're like, oh, we can't play certain songs because then people will start fighting. That's right. And I think it was like the West Side Connect or something. Snoop Dogg. Oh, Snoop Dogg West Side Connection. Uh, they couldn't play those Come songs. out and play. Yeah, it was that song. Oh, yeah. 1996. 1996. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the groove. See, understand this. Music is a mental motivator. Go to church. Go to a funeral. You got the organ playing. Uh, Crying your butt off. Because the keys and the tones and the, the, the rhythms of that sound of, that, of those particular towns, um, particular, particular keys make you sad. But on the go to church on Sunday, you go to the same church, same organ, because homeboy play that that, 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 that bad song. Church feeling good. Oh my God, he was a boy. <laughs> okay, you live church feeling good, make you feel good. Well, hip hop does the same thing. It does the same thing. You got a, you got one of them, one of them, one of them angry groove that you have. Uh, yeah, that's the, yeah. Uh, uh, and, it, it makes you aggressive. Okay, you got a, a deep bass. I uh, wish I had. I'm, I'm put it on, on my on myself the next time. You, you got these these deep these deep bass grooves, and they make you crazy. The same thing with rock and roll. You got the free and free guitars, and you got the head make um, be player. Everybody in the band know who you are. Okay? You, you can be from Oakland, but they know you got Sacramento, they know you all the north. Now getting past that Central Valley down to LA, whole different thing. Okay? Whole different back in the day, we didn't have that problem. Okay? We take our songs uh, to, to KML up in the bay, they bring theirs down to K-Day. Okay? My first gig was in was in, was in uh, Sacramento. My first gig was in Sacramento. Because that's how we did it. Okay? Um, Can I interrupt you for a second? One of the biggest issues going on with West Coast hip hop is the disconnect between the entire state of California and everywhere else that has created this culture of hip hop. There's a complete disconnect. That's one of the things that I'm covering in the film that I told you all about is this disconnect. And we're trying to see what what we can do is, is people in the entertainment industry to try to try to change that. One of them is, is the camera. The other one is people in the industry who are artists and producers and others coming together and bringing back what used to be a unified front. They don't have some of the same issues as big as we do on the, on the East Coast as we do on the West, and there's some reasons why that has happened. We can talk about that later. Do you realize, here we go, I'm, I gotta get political, this is political, this is political science, guys. Politics or hip hop culture, you can get okay. political as you want. Do you realize what would happen if blacks from L.A., Oakland, Frisco, and Latinos from uh, San, San Jose, Frisco got together? Right. You got, no, no, just got together oh. and start seeing eye to eye. I hope you crazy. Ain't no guns. They ain't got no guns. <laughs> okay? I'm not trying to start that. I'm just saying you have to keep them divided because you get them together, you can't win. Division is Conquer, was it divide conquer? Divisiveness keeps them, keeps you keeps you under control. Doc. If they got the bay, not like in LA, well, that's cool, because now we can control the LA, we can control the bay. Same thing with East Coast, West Coast. East Coast, West Coast, that wasn't no problem. My first group I was going to was Run DMC. I bought Run DMC, their first plane ticket to Los Angeles, California. Colonel Flow 2. I ain't care about no reason. Only thing was bad about me, they don't pay you cost too much money. Other than that, come on down. Okay, I was one of the first West Coast acts to, West Coast acts to go to the Apollo, play on the Wednesday night, and not get booed. Okay, that's how we did it back then. Now some cats talking that talking that hip hop gangbang stuff. I'm the baddest MC. No, you're gonna get run off. They're gonna run you out of New York. You're gonna leave them with your bags in your hand. Okay, but if you go out there with some respect, do your show, you get your love like everybody, every every place else. 
the last place to come on the scene, but it was our first place we always ran to, we want to break, break the material, was down south. When I drop a record, I get, I said, two places, K Day, Greg back to K Day, down south of my boy in the, in the, uh, down in the dirty south. They didn't have hip hop back then. Back then, we go to uh, go to Mississippi, Louisiana, or Atlanta, we were guys. They beat us at the airport, they beat the Beatles. Oh, you don't know about the Beatles. You don't know. <laughs> they treat me like I was Jay Z, okay? <laughs> they treat us like we were Jay Z back then, okay? I don't forget, we went to the mall one day. We used to have these, these purple record crew jackets, our tour jackets. Had a big old star on the back of them. Speaking of that, before I say that, when the NWA movie come out next year, it's going to be a guy in the movie playing me. Okay? He, don't, he won't be as handsome as me, but they tried to find him. Right? <laughs> but he comes to Jerry Curl with a little beard. His name is Lonzo. He'll be in the movie. Okay? We'll get back to the story. We walk, we in Texas, we in Louisiana, right? Walking down the mall. Got a record crew jacket on. Hey, we just hang it out. All of a sudden, look back. Three or four girls, they get me. We kept on walking. About 10, 15 girls, they still get me. By the time we got halfway to the mall, it's about 40, 50 people behind us. And they are being aggressive. They kind of want to get up close. We try, we don't want to be bothered. We try to jog if it takes. Next thing you know, we run through the mall with about 100 people behind us. Okay? That's how it was for us back down south. Okay, they had to lock us in the room, call security, call the police. They escort, escort us to the van that was in the parking lot. That's how big record crew was back in the day down south. That same trip, when I got off the plane, I had to get your cab home. Okay? That's real. That's, that's the real story. Okay? Because in L.A., you just another cat. You got too many celebrities in L.A. to blow up in L.A. And, you know, you got Kobe, you got this cat, you got this basketball player, this football player, this basketball player, this movie star. But down south, you ain't got nobody. They, 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 back then, there wasn't a Lil Wayne, there wasn't a Master P, okay? So, record crew was the bomb. Between fighting mosquitoes and, and crickets on your butt all day long, it was a good time. Anybody have more questions? Go ahead, Doc. Do you feel that music, well, hip-hop in particular, will get any worse than it is now? Oh, God, I hope not. I hope not, dude. Because I saw, I saw Nicki Minaj Anaconda video. <laughs> <laughs> That's as bad as it gets. Huh? I saw, the, I, I saw the video, and I'm thinking to myself, I know there's an extra version of some place, probably. Okay? My son, I got a 12-year-old son. He's walking through the house like this right here. He knows he can't even look at this right here. <laughs> but, who, but how many parents, how many parents let their kid watch this? Okay? And nobody don't say nothing. Nobody don't say, see this, uh, understand this. When I can't, I, I could, I could say something. But, oh, he, oh, he just, oh, he's an old folk. He don't, he don't know what's happening right now. Y'all got to say something. I can, I can back you up. Okay, y'all heard the Black Panthers? Y'all heard of us? They was y'all. They, they were younger than y'all. They were 16, 17, 18 years old. Put it down. Quick story about the Black Panthers. Back in 1968, they walked. They, they uh, went to the Sacramento. Ronald Reagan. President was then he was a governor. He looked outside, he got about 25 brothers and sisters out there with shotguns and rifles. This one you can carry your a shotgun in your a rifle in your car legally. It was legal to carry a shotgun in your car. Okay? He looked outside of the uh, state capitol. He said, Whoa! What the hell? Hey man, they break the law, they got you, they got you. right to do this. I tell you what, we're gonna change that law tomorrow morning. Next day they change the law. They carry them in car no more. But I said, I said, I'll say this. Youngsters are the ones that make a difference. If y'all don't like it, because everything is geared towards y'all. Tennis shoes, the clothes are geared towards y'all. I'm not paying 300 for no tennis shoes. I'm not going to do it. I'm, they know I ain't going to do it. So they, they, they can't tell me that. They can't tell me, Lonzo, you need to buy these Nikes to be me. I'm not doing that. I got other things to do with my money. Y'all don't. So if you, want to, if you want to see something different, y'all got to be the one to make the change, OK? Guys like myself, we'll support you 110%. I ain't got enough money to, I ain't got enough money to be a, 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 a pirate or a respected pirate. If Dre said it, but he ain't going to say it because it's going to be with his money. Understand, money rules everything right now. 
Money running to everything. You ain't got no money, you're going to be out of class. If you can sell some tennis shoes, you can sell some headphones that's made in China for $300 a head, a pair, it costs $10, I give you a billion for them. Where the, where the three headphones made that? Where they made it? They're not made nowhere in LA. They're not, nowhere on this, on this ocean, right? They made it in China. But you have a bunch of head, okay? These headphones cost about $10 a head, a, a pair to make. They look good, okay? They look good. According to the um, uh, popular science, they are high sound wise, but Drake's name on the side of so therefore, they must be the bomb. <laughs> they must be the bomb. Drake, not his name on it. Drake made hit records 20 years ago. Think about that. Drake made records 20 years ago. He had a record in 20 years. The Chronic is 20 years old. About, about 20 years old this year. So he ain't been, he was a man behind Eminem and 50 Cent. Okay? So he must know what he's talking about. So his headphones, oh man, I can't let him go for no, no less than 300. No less than 300. 300 for the headphones? Do you realize I'm, I'm in the music game? I've been on the, I've owned studio forever. <clears throat> the best studio headphones back in the day would cost you $75. They came in a case. They was all a velvet line, the whole nine yards. Okay? They were made here in America by some union way, union paid people, and they weren't made in no sweatshop in China for ten dollars. Okay? Understand? Made by money and by nothing in this country. Alright? And hip hop, if hip if y'all say if you're tired of this negative hip hop, guess what? They're gonna find a way to, while they're gonna get some play. But as long as they as long as Anaconda is making them money and Lil Wayne can wear, wear them grills in 2014. Looking like a gremlin. <laughs> okay? They're going to keep on giving things. They don't know what you want. They don't know what you want. You don't never say, y'all never say that? Y'all, that's cool. I'll take it. I'll, I, I, I'll buy some of those. Y'all never say that. It's funny. You know, I, again, I, I, as old as I am, I can sing so much. I can't, nobody got nothing on the day. Coke, uh, this, these shoes. We used to call them crocus sacks. It's called four dollars for a pair of crocus sacks. Crocus sack, you bought a pair of crocus sacks and a pair of Levi's. Levi's cost you ten dollars. Now it's high! Ten dollars for Levi's, four dollars for some crocus sacks, and a t-shirt and a black leather jacket, you can sharp as all outdoors. Nowadays, crocus sacks is forty dollars. Levi's is seventy-five. And I'm sitting there going, wow, what happened? You know what happened? Corporation bought, bought the design and reissued them. And what happens is, you got a you got a CEO who makes about $10 million a year. He got to get paid first and foremost. So everybody else under him gets a small, small amount of money, and the product still costs you maybe a dollar fifty to make, if that much. But because it's retro, y'all never seen them before. He can sell them to you for $40. He can't sell them for $40. I know better. Y'all don't know better. Everything y'all seeing, I saw 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago. Y'all seen it for the first time. Okay, that's the beauty of being an old dude. You, 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 see, you see fads come and go. The only fad I've seen come and ain't left yet is sagging. I'm trying to figure out what is the big issue. But ladies, y'all y'all accept that. It's y'all fault. It's y'all fault. It's y'all fault, ladies. It's y'all fault. Because y'all ain't never told me what to put your pants up. Put your pants up. I'm glad to see my brother here, Sack, and I appreciate that. I really do. That lets me know that y'all serious about trying to do something about you, which is the future. But, ladies, if you accept it, we keep on giving it to you. You and all y'all, you're only going to get what you accept. Okay? Go ahead. That's just like when uh, Air Force Ones first came back out. Like, uh, you know, Nelly had the song Air Force right. Ones. Then the price on Air Force Ones went up. Then Fabulous came out with the jersey, with the throwback jersey, throwing right. them on backwards. They start going, the jersey start going super high. So it was like. Right. It's a game. And y'all can play it every time. Yeah. And a lot of people buy into it. You know? 
Tell me what a purse is going to do. We brought this up in the bedroom. What, what, if this is a purse, it costs $20,000. What's it going to do to this bag can't do? We get you some ooze and eyes. Ooh, girl, she got one of them bags. <laughs> <laughs> or the other one's going to say, ooh, she got a, that's a nice, that's a knockoff. It could be the real thing. You're either going to get loved or hated on, one of the two. But all you want to do is carry your, carry your homework, right? Carry your, your assignments. But why ain't got to cost $20,000? Okay? Why do you care? Why, why do you care? I don't care. I'm going to say it. That, that's what happens. That's, 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 that's how you get caught up, though. That's how you get caught up. Okay? That's how you get caught up. That's, that's what they're banking on. Oh, he got the new Jordans. Oh, no! You hot for about three days. <laughs> but you, you charge them Jordans, so you can work your butt off to get them Jordans for about a weekend worth of props. Come on. You, a weekend worth of props. Is it really worth it? Hell no. <laughs> at, at 150, you can go someplace else. Yes, you can. Okay? If y'all, here we go now, political, a little bit of, little bit of money. Y'all put away $150, put, put away $150 every month if you could. By the time you mind, you'd be balled out of control. I wish I did. If you put away $100 a month at y'all age right now, just put it, you ain't got to, you ain't got to be no high interest bearing account. Just put it away. Get them joy. I'm going to put your $100 away. By the time you what, 30? You say, oh shoot, I can go buy something. For real, I can profit. Weapons of mass distraction. Get your money from me. Keep you broke. Poor people spend all their money trying to look broke, and rich people laughing at y'all, trying to look like them. And they look, they look poor. Ride down, if you ever go to Hollywood, between Wilshire and Melrose, street called Rossmore. Mansions everywhere. Look at the cars in the parking lot, in the, in the driveway. Prius, Toyotas, Priuses, Hondas, Scions, Scions. What about Crenshaw? Lexus is. <laughs> huh? Cadillacs doing somersaults. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'm just keeping it real, folks. If I can keep it real, don't call me back. That's what I do. All right? That's what I do. I'm trying to give, trying to give some, somebody, some, somebody gave me. Okay? Everybody can't give you this right here. Any more questions? Give it. So, if those eight corporations own the majority of the music, and nobody regulates. It used to be regulated until by two, by 1998, when uh, Colin Powell's son, I forgot his name, he, Colin Powell was the, was the, was the attorney general, was the, uh, defense, what, what was he, he was in charge of defense for the Bush Secretary of, Defen of Defense. Huh? Secretary of Defense. Secretary of Defense for the, for the Bush administration. One of the favors to the Bush administration, get my son a job. I put him in charge of the FCC, the Federal, Federal uh, Communication uh, Commission. And one night, when nobody paid attention, because he spent time, a corporation can only own so much advertising. You couldn't own radio, you couldn't own radio, all the radio stations, you couldn't own all the TV stations, you couldn't own the media. But now, one, one night, when nobody was paying attention, he signed the bill. Bob, get what you want. So now, you got Clear Channel and Cumulus and a few other corporations own everything. Every concert you go to, Needleland. Okay? Uh, what's the other company you have? Uh, Viacom. Huh? Viacom. All these corporations control every concert, not even at the venue. The forum was owned by the same people that own uh, Madison Square Garden. Um, the Hollywood Palladium is owned by uh, IEIG, AEG. All these corporations, and all your entertainment. I can't get a gig nowhere. I got to go to one of the corporations. I make it a little club gig. But I can't go to win this, go to the form, hey, I'm going to do when we do a show. They don't do that no more. If you're not through the, through the agency, you ain't through the demographics, you ain't through whatever the case may be, you're not going to get no play. That's why folks have problems getting, breaking, breaking new acts. They only going to break the act like, uh, they only break the act they want to get broke. Because back in the day, we control, as artists, we control our release date, we control the airplay, we control everything. Our manufacturer, we didn't have no labels. I was my own label. I was my own label. 
I had to get my own label because nobody would give me a record deal. I got my first record deal. I already had uh, album and four singles out already. All right? I, I got dropped after a year, made the most segment, made my best records after I got dropped. And by this time, I know better. I don't need a record deal. Every time somebody wants to license one of my songs, they got to call me. Okay? Well, when my record is on, on the radio, I get the check. I'm in control of my international properties. That's why I say, I got checks coming right now. I'm in negotiations with video games, the whole nine yards. So once you create the product, the, the intellectual property, and you own it, and if it has some value to it, if you control it, that's what they want. All they want is your product. They want your product. See, record deal, first thing you want a record deal, I ain't selling out. I ain't, boy. When you buy a record, when you get a record deal, you just sold out. Over with. Having a record deal, for me, was the best and the worst thing I ever did. Because up until then, if my record stopped selling, I just make another. My phone rang, I go do the gig. But when I got a record deal, I make an album, make it in January, make it in uh, January, schedule for the release in February. Oh, the new Luther Vandross came out, got a bump you back. Oh, the new Tina Marie came out, got a bump you back. Oh, the new Michael Jackson come back, pop, it come out to, to July. As y'all all know, hip hop is spontaneous. Well, I'm sorry, y'all don't know about that. Because back in the day, everybody was independent. So, if y'all ever heard the Shante, the, the Roxanne, the uh, Roxanne Awards? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all remember them? Yeah. All those are independent artists. So, you talk about Shante, the real Shante, Roxanne today, tomorrow he got an album out because he go to the studio that night and do the same thing, bam, and had an answer record for four weeks out. Okay, and y'all, everybody making money. Off this fictitious war, because girls actually were buddies. But they finally had a niche. It was like the WWF, okay? I talk about you, you talk about me. We all get paid. Alright? Can't do that no more. Because you gotta you gotta go through a corporate meeting, then the line, be with the product manager, be with the advertising and the marketing department, slows the whole process down, kill the game. Kill the game. But today, the game can be re, re uh Reignited because you can make a record so fast, but nobody gonna hear it. That's the only problem. Follow me. You go to your studio right now, make your record on, like I said, Fruity Loop, uh, Final Cup, or not Final Cup, bro, uh, you know what I want. Adult, whatever the case may be, make your album, have it out, no mastery, no nothing, no tape, no nothing, put it on the internet in a matter of minutes, bam, blows up. Okay? But, nobody, if you ain't got no Facebook friends, no YouTube hits, Nobody gonna know what's happening. Or oh, you might get that guy on the skates from behind your background. You see him on the skates? <laughs> <laughs> you missed your video. <laughs> so, when you see stuff like that, that's a perfect example of somebody who just wants some attention. Okay? He, wants, he, 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 has, he, he has thrown his respect away because ain't nowhere in the world a real dude. You be on some skates and some dunks and dunks. Talk about it. Okay? Just for some attention. Okay? He had and I, That was funny. That was kind of clever. But do you really want to go that way? You guys go to school. I mean, if you want to, you guys put the money, you all they here for free. That's the dog, I'm sure. Okay? So, do you want to take, take that and just waste it on something like that when you got the, when you got the ability to do better? All right? Anybody else? Uh, Give it. How do you feel about world star hip hop? You know what? Sometimes world star hip hop is funny, okay? <laughs> Sometimes it's funny, but I got a problem. I got a problem with imagery of African Americans. On all media. Okay, I got a problem with reality shows, especially basketball wise. I got a problem with that. Why do I got a problem with that? Because that shows young African American women, young women in general, no matter how much money I can get, I still go, I think I can be ghetto. I ain't cool with that. World Strike Hip Hop shows us at our lowest, okay? Yeah, we know sisters be fighting for the bees. That's our business, though. Okay? There's certain things you don't tell everybody. Okay? But again, 
they sell out respect for attention. They trade respect for attention. Okay? And that's the problem with, with, with all these different media sources. Everybody wants to get attention. Nobody cares about getting respect. Okay? Everybody in Facebook, on Facebook with a picture. Especially the sisters. Okay? They got booty shots everywhere. I can't even scroll to my Facebook page. They got butt everywhere. Okay? Some of them fine. Don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> but some of them ain't. Okay? Do you really want to be known for that? You try to, you try to do something big time later on in life, because y'all know all that stuff follows you forever. Okay? Ain't no taking it back. Ain't no taking it back. So once it's out there, it's out there. So you got there on Facebook doing your, doing your as they say, doing your fizzle. And all of a sudden, in 2017, you want to do something big time. Uh, oh, yeah, you was on Facebook doing, the, doing your fizzle back in 2014. I'm like, yeah, you baby, I'm sorry. You represent us. You, you violated our moral clause. Ever heard that? That moral clause, they get people in so much trouble. That's what got Donald Sterling. Uh, that's why he lost his own, uh, his own basketball team. They have, in the owner's uh, agreement, they have a moral clause. You can't say certain things because you, you're an owner. Especially about your players if they like. Or people, period. They expect you to be of a certain standard. They expect you to maintain a level of respect. Okay, then at some point in time... Guys, guys. Wait, 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 you got a question? Yeah. Okay, give me one second. Okay. At some point in time, you got, you got no one to draw the line. Okay? And that's the problem. That's, uh, that's, the, that's the problem. The, these lines got to be drawn by your generation. Y'all got to be the ones, hey, man, McDonald's, y'all got to put some real meat in this food, man. <laughs> y'all can't just keep giving up this, this soy and this whatever, all this sugar and salt. You got to put some, put, put, put some cow in this thing, okay? <laughs> you going to tell them, tell me it's a cow. Can I get at least 70% cow before y'all put all this other stuff in there? If, but if y'all keep eating it, they're going to keep doing it. Yeah, baby, I'm, go ahead, Alvin. Oh, um, I just wanted to know, did you see that special uh, about the no, I did not. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, well, it was just saying, um, I know one guy, I think his name is Big Mike or something like that, he used to, or, I don't know uh, what's his name, but he was just saying how, um, like, a long time ago, music or hip-hop has to be brought to, like, the East Coast or L.A. to, like, really get some type of play. Right. He was saying, like, now artists want to bring their music to, to the ATL. Or just the South period, see if it's gonna play before they bring it to like the East Coast or the West Coast. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's very true. It's always been that way, though. Okay. It's, the ATL or uh, down South has always been more receptive to our music. See, you gotta, you gotta understand the uh, the people that run the, the. First of all, most of your music and most of your movies are controlled by the East Coast. Don't let anybody take nothing different. Okay, every check I've ever gotten from uh, a major corporation, Sony, EMI, uh, whoever the case may be, it came from New York. Okay? Now they may have satellite offices here in the, here in the West Coast, but the head office is in New York. Okay? So what happened is, babe, you got down there, you don't have the uh, strict, the strict um, corporate control that you have on the West Coast. Okay? Back down south, when a record crew would go, would go do a radio interview, you had to go to a, you had to drive to a cow field, pass up the bulls, some chickens, and get into a, go into a trailer. A lot of these radio stations are still in these trailers. Okay? Now in LA, all your all your um, radio stations, they have high rises. They got big rent to pay. So they got a whole other mindset. Okay? Down there, you might still might have a radio station in a little small, small building or whatever the case may be, and still make they may be owned by a corporation, but it still may be programmed by a single cat. So you got you guys actually get a little love. Plus, the strip clubs down there control the music anyway. Mm -hmm. You get to the strip club, it goes to the radio. That same thing I said to you earlier, if you get to the dance clubs in here, it goes to the radio. Okay? Because their uh, radio wants to be in tune with what's happening in the streets, so they want to get in behind, but radio got so many requirements. You know, you, you know, you decide to be a TV set or a trip to Hawaii and like, give away to these people and you buy some advertising and stuff for your artists. But if you get me a hit record, I'm going to bypass all that because it's a hit. I can't let stupid not playing this. I don't, want to buy, I, I don't want power to jump on this before I jump on this. I don't want 93.5 to jump on this before I jump on this. So if it's a hit, they're going to jump on it. 
and but, but usually the hit protection in the club. And that's where you know, all, you know, all your excuse me, all your testing ground is right there in the club. That's where everything happens at. Anybody else? I got about two and a half minutes. If that means. Y'all good? Go ahead, Doc. How do you feel about the how do I put this? The the feminization. Oh, that's, that's, that's a whole other, other class. I've mean, got to come back and look at that right there. But I'll tell you one thing. I don't, I, I, got, I think I mentioned earlier, I have a son 12 years old. What he knows, he is, he knows the term gay, that the whole nine yards. I didn't, I, I, I'm from Compton. We didn't know nothing about that until I was almost 16, 17. We didn't experience that. We weren't we wouldn't exposed to that. They had a little, back in the day, they had a sign for, for gay. It was like this right here. If you saw somebody, look at homeboy. That's all they said. <laughs> that was, but that was amongst grown folks. You knew what it, you thought you knew what it meant, but you wasn't sure. You follow me? So your, your mama look at, you see somebody doing, walking a little funny, and your mama said, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. But it wasn't on television. You didn't see it on television, okay? It wasn't exposed to you. It wasn't exposed to what it is. If that's what they do, if you grow grown ass man, do what you do. I ain't mad at you. Grown woman, do what you do. Get the kid a chance. That's all. That's all. Give them a chance. Let them, let them experience something before you guide them to a certain thing. All right? We good? We are good. Thank you, sir. Give a hand, please. If there's one last question, ask it now. Otherwise, I'll go with the peace.